Bible prophecy warns of a flesh man coming on the scene with supernatural powers that he got from the devil. Well, he will use these supernatural powers to do miracles in the sight of men, and these miracles he will use to fool the entire world into thinking that he's God or Jesus Christ or try to replace Christ. Let me tell you about the mark of the beast and the Antichrist real quick. The Antichrist is going to be somebody that's going to be a hundred times worse than Hitler. But when he starts out, he's going to be a beautiful speaker, uh, mesmerizing in appearance, and a man of peace. That's how he's going to present himself. And he's going to unite all the world's religions under him. And he's going to pretty much form... A religious dictatorship that will kill anybody that doesn't bow down to him first on his list will be to kill Christians to take the place of Jesus Christ and to claim that he's God he's gonna sit in the temple over in Jerusalem and pretend to be God well his system is gonna be financial economic and all that and you won't be you won't be able to be a part of that system unless you take an oath to him and reject all your former faiths like Christianity and whatever else you believed in. And if you ain't willing to do that, they'll threaten your family and threaten your kids and threaten your mom to kill them first in front of you and then kill you. But if you're a Christian, you know that you got to stick with Christ no matter what, even if it means death because Christ died for us. He gave us his all, you know, just so we could have a chance to live with him in heaven. So this uh, Mark of the Beast and Antichrist, it has teeth behind it because in 1991, these laws were introduced to the U.S. from the Sanhedrin called the Noahide Laws. And there's seven of them. But as you go deeper into these Noahide Laws, one of the tenets is if you will not renounce Jesus Christ, the penalty is death because worshiping Jesus Christ to the Sanhedrin and the Noahide Laws is considered idolatry. And so they'll murder you. These, the Sanhedrin is the same guys back in the Bible days that conspired against and murdered Jesus because they were jealous of Jesus because Jesus was like an innovator. You know, where they was all about that religion and exploiting people. But Jesus Christ came with the true faith, which was a family, family based doctrine. Where you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the Son. He's our Redeemer. He's our Healer. He's our everything. And He came to earth from heaven to show us how to do it. And the difference between Him and all these other false gods is Jesus Christ is the only God that said He wasn't too good to die for His servants. So He left His throne in heaven and came down here and died. Took our penalty on the cross because we were sinners and we were worthy of whatever punishment we were supposed to get by the bad things we've done. But Christ said, you know what, Father? I'll take their punishment for them. And if they follow me, I'll, I'll lead them to heaven. So leave them in my hands. So Christ is like our lawyer, our defender, our everything. Because Satan, all he does is accuse us of all, accuse us of all the bad things we do. He's like, hey, God, look at what they're doing. They're just like me. So I get to take them into hell. But Christ said, hey. If they follow me, my blood is on them so they're mine and I can take them with me to heaven. So that's what the deal is with Jesus Christ and this mark of the beast and antichrist system. This antichrist figure, he's going to have supernatural powers and all that. He's going to have everything that he needs from the devil to fool mankind. But just know if you're a Christian, you can't go along with him just to save your life or to eat or anything like that because if you do God will reject you and you won't be able to go to heaven so you have to hold on no matter how hard it gets so it's letting everybody know about the antichrist and the beast system alright guys make the right choice God bless you and I love you yeah I received an update today on the mark of the beast and uh, from a prophet of God and uh, she was telling me about the Lord was letting know about the RFID chip that that goes in conjunction with the mark of the beast uh, do not take it do not let them inject you with it do not let them give it to you as a tattoo and do not ingest it like taking it like a tablet don't take it at all because taking the mark of the beast is unforgivable by God he will not forgive you at all if you take the mark of the beast 
and also that, that RFID chip, it, it, it is a GMO, so once it's in you, it's also going to kill you, and then on top of that, you lose your soul too, uh, to hell, so it have nothing to do with RFID chip, I don't care how much convenience they, they tell you it's going to be and all this, just don't take it. Alright people, God bless. I'm going to read from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength. And has kept my word and has not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth behold I come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, I'm reading from Second Thessalonians chapter 2, and this relates to the Antichrist topic. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. As, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth, and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivable, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Wherefore, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. 
Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. They'll try to run it in with Elliott. And he will take it in for a Cowboy score. Ezekiel Elliott, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Cowboys take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. So Dak will bring the Cowboys up to go for the two-point try. Swing, swing to the right, to the right. There goes wide in. They'll try and run it up the middle. And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. And what a way to cap off the opening touchdown drive. You go for two and you get it. Remember when the PAT or the extra point was a gimme, right? Not plus 99%. It's not that way anymore, so more people are willing to take a chance, go for two, and take the kicker a little bit out of the game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. Here we go now. 3 19. 3 19. Over, 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 over. The first carry now. This is Johnson, and he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down and eight to start things out. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Mayfield now on second down. He's going to sling this deep down. And that's caught inside the 30. And he takes it all the way down to the 28-yard line. It's a big play there for the Browns. 44 yards. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. The first down carry here for Johnson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. Check 
Now a second down throw for Mayfield. Looking for the end zone. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Jordan Lewis. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down a score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And certainly they'll be hoping to hit pay dirt like they did on the last drive. Got the football back, so a chance to go up two scores. And they haven't been tentative at all in this ball game because sometimes you start a game with your script to try and get information out of the opposing defense. How will they play you in certain situations? Sometimes you script to attack, and that's what I'm seeing so far. zone. Prescott, he's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll take this one up to about the six-yard line. A gain of four on the play, and they're going to have a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate Big plays for an offense. Oh, and they had him stopped short of the first, but a penalty marker down. And that looked like a clear face mask to me. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and ten. After the penalty is Smith. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And there we saw one of the downsides of Blitzen going to run down because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Larry Ogunjobi there to make the tackle. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. The Cowboys on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. They're up against a third and one situation. On the sneak, it's Prescott. And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. He'll wind up getting two there as he does it himself and picks up the first. A first down carry for Smith. And not much doing. He'll get this only up to about the 36. Tackle made by Demarius Randall. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. That's awesome. Gun, gun, gun. Here we go, 46, 46. Prescott to throw this time. Buying time to his left. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right?
And now with the play clock winding down, Jason Garrett opts to take a timeout as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. The Cowboys on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This is third and nine. Play action now. Prescott. He shakes it off. But he can't get away forever, and down he goes. Got to give him points for the attempt, but there's just a wave of pressure there. A host of people in the area. Evades a few, but couldn't evade all of them. They'll break the huddle here and go for it. This is fourth down. Hey, 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 hey. Four down, four down. Under, under. 26. They're indeed going for it. It's Prescott. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. That's caught inside the 20. And he takes this way down deep into Cleveland territory. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. From the red zone now, Prescott. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Jeff Swain, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern in the middle of the end zone. And ordinarily, that's a tough spot to find because there's usually coverage to take away that portion of the field. But they found a gap, and they exploited it. The point after is good, and the lead is up to 15 now. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now the Browns coming out on the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does. And a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game. And typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Right, Anything, 56. at least three lucky points 56. get that zero off the board. Right, lucky 56. Lucky 56. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Got a man, it's Brashad Perriman. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Mayfield on first down. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Field. 
Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Jalen Smith. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and ten. Final play of the half, Prescott, and that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. The intended receiver, Tavon Austin, and that'll bring up second down. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and ten. They'll throw now on the final play. Looking for Austin, intercepted. Picked off by Howard Wilson. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. So we have come to halftime here in Dallas with the Cowboys out in front. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. To this point, the results have not been good. Two possessions, two turnovers. And that's obviously something that can't continue, but to go a little bit deeper on that one, I would think about some play calls now, not even necessarily to my best player, but to someone I can trust with the ball, try and get things settled go down go a little bit. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. Incomplete. Hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and ten. He's going to look deep down the field. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On third down, Mayfield. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by the linebacker, Jalen Smith. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. You hear me laughing, partner, and I'm not laughing at the situation. But sometimes you just get yourself into a rut. It's hard to shake yourself out of it. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Following the interception, here's Prescott. He's going to air one, and this is caught inside the five. They give him a gain of 38. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make a play on the football. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Here we go now with Smith. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Now, that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield.
Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. Now Prescott. A dump off to Elliott. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. It's a loss of two. Now third down. A big play to start the drive got him in this position, but this defense has held firm since, and now it's third and goal. Prescott from the gun. He'll buy some time right. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked up by the Michigan man, Jabril Peppers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Hurry up, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. Following the interception, Mayfield incomplete. Jordan Lewis right there on the coverage. He has still not connected on a single pass in this second half. And right now, they're going through all the different no, reasons, no, the whys, Patrick, the wherefores, bottom line. Got to find some completions Detroit, in there and Detroit. get their offense moving. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Detroit! Detroit! Hot! Hot! On second down, Mayfield again. And the Cowboys' pressure gets there this time for the sack. Demarcus Lawrence. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Detroit! Detroit! Third and long for Mayfield. He's going to air one out. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Another drive comes and goes. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. And now we've got flags down. Looked like one of the Browns might have moved. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Snap it to Mayfield, and his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by the linebacker, Jalen Smith, and he will score. Touchdown, Cowboys. This D wanted to put it away before we even get to the fourth quarter, widening that margin a bit further. And while they won't just empty the bench just yet, if you're a backup, start loosening up. I think you'll get a chance to play before this one is over now with that type of a cushion. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. The extra point splits the uprights, and the lead opens up now to 22 points.
So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is taken at the three. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. I had one tell me once, you know, when we're having a tough patch, this two shall pass, this two shall pass, and then finally kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Brashad Perriman, and it's second down. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Uh, wow. No, Patrick, <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that. And he will go down. A Cowboys sack. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there is just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out now. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Looks like another empty possession here, partner, and I don't think with three scores down in the third quarter, they can truly afford any more the rest of the way. No, especially the way their offense is sputtering. I, I think you're exactly right. they got to find some answers quickly. Mayfield steps away to his left. Now he's going to let it go deep. And this will be caught at the 30. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. Fourth down conversion plays. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe 10. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. Back now in Arlington. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Second down, Mayfield. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. And now here is another interception. Picked off at the 20. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. Thought they had something going there to break that goose egg here in the second half, but to no avail. Hope was alive until that interception. What a terrific play, taking the ball away after it looked like they were starting a drive. And now that shutout still standing. You know that's something those defensive guys hold a lot of pride on, too. No doubt about it. They are excited about where they are in this game. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and ten at their own 27. 46. 46. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And Beasley with it over the middle. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. 46. 46. 46. A first down throw for Prescott. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And another mistake here defensively as a flag is down on the tackle. And that's going to tack on 15 more. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Prescott looks to throw on first. And 
And this one's incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target. And now it's second down. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. A second down throw for Prescott. He's airing it out for Williams. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and ten. And again, it's Prescott. Escaping the pressure right. Looking deep for Elliott. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Howard Wilson. Okay, it's real simple to say from here, but we know that sometimes as a quarterback, you've got to know when to say when and just throw it away. Flushed out to the right, tries to make something out of nothing here, and he winds up floating one downfield that gets intercepted. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, go, first go, and 10 go, go. at the 20. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. From the gun, Mayfield. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. Mayfield now on second down. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by the linebacker, Jalen Smith. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Jackson able to fight through one tackle and they'll work it inside the 15 yard line before it's all said and done 12 yards there as they move the chains and when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts they've got all three still defensively to me you have to start right now here's the time and that means you've got to stop them on defense not give up the yardage Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Here's Elliott. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cowboys use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. So Dak will bring the Cowboys up to go for the two-point try. They'll try and run it up the middle. And they are just not going to let up as he is into the end zone here for two more.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys. You had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. Dancing to his left. He's going to look deep for Perriman. And that is caught. One-handed. Oh, my. He pulled it in. A big play that time for Cleveland. 44 yards. First and 10, Mayfield. Going deep here for Landry. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading Watch things out, body. putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the go perimeter on, and find their go way on. open. Detroit! Detroit! A second down throw for Mayfield. That's complete over the middle to Cataway. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. That goes for a gain of 31. That could not Detroit! have been timed out any better. And that's exactly what receivers want. The ball in their hands as quick as possible. Allowed. And he's across for the touchdown. Too little, too late. But he does get in for six. No wonder you're grinning. You just beat me in our fantasy league. Indeed I did, my good man. So they will get on the scoreboard here. Give him credit for that. Too little, too late, but no zero. Oh, you, you're going slow clap on me. <laughs> Not very nice, is it? No, but they haven't been very nice on offense. It's been a struggle. And he's got it in the end zone. Bit of a surprising call here, down by as many as they are, but the fake works, and they'll get two points closer instead of one. And the Cowboys are able to recover. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. Terrence Williams, 44 yards. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. So another score there, and often you talk about the three phases of the game, defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that <laughs> as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that Set. worked, Green, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles Green, and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Detroit! Detroit! Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Being chased out left. Now he's going to let it go deep left side. And now here is another interception. Picked off at the 21. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. 
The number seven, usually lucky here, not for him. Seven picks he's thrown in this game. That's only happened six times since 1960. And I know that the most recent time it happened, the guy who threw him, he had won a Heisman Trophy in college, so sometimes you just have a lousy game. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad career, but when you're talking about one game, seven, you're right, not lucky at all. Yeah, Ty Detmer, the last to do it in 2001 to throw seven picks. And the Browns getting set to go. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what All happened right, now, on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Go, 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 get out there, get out there. Oh, shit. Prescott on first down. And give him another six. It's caught for a touchdown, and the blowout continues. And now we've hit that stage of the game, partner, where one of our predecessors, one of the great commentators of all time, he used to sing in this situation when this game appeared to be over. <laughs> I know the fat lady's been singing for some no, time. No, 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 not her at all. This but she's singing too. Oh, no, she's singing. She, yeah, she's, she's, she's on like the fifth tune. Yeah, she, she left scales way behind. But he used to sing something about turning out the lights. The party was over. Point after, right down the middle. And that will extend this big lead. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So they got him coming up from his linebacker spot. And sometimes the position designation really doesn't matter. If you creep up to the line of scrimmage, you just have to look for the football. Make sure it moves before you do. So the penalty certainly helps them out as they come up on second and five. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Jumping all the way from the outside, maybe getting a little early start in the corner blitz. And the only time it makes sense to get that penalty is exactly as you described. Otherwise, he should never get that penalty. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this right, offense, now, first and ten. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He's going to let it fly, and that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. Try to get it all back with one big shot right there, but even if successful, that doesn't get them all the way back to where they need to be. Can't totally abandon throwing the ball underneath as well. Now a desperation throw deep down feet. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Anthony Brown. And he'll take this all the way down inside the 40. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be from 56 yards out. Yeah. 
And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Oh, wait, hold everything. A timeout has been called. Seemingly silly with one second remaining in this game. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10. Hey, check right, check right. Watch the five. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Detroit, Detroit. Gone, gone. Gone, gone. Gone, gone. Gone, gone. Now problems right out of the gate. We're going to get a delay. So that'll bump it back to a first and 15.